Hey there, and welcome back. Previously, we demonstrated how to calculate a couple of the spherical harmonic functions, which, if we recall, were a separable spatial solution in spherical coordinates. This time, we have two new cases, including a specialized case. Additionally, we will check that these actually verify the differential equation they are supposed to be the solution of. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to understand how to manipulate these forms and get information regarding the case, uh, special cases for M. What we want to do here in the problem statement is use the equation 4.32, color code it below, to find the spherical harmonic for L and L and the spherical harmonic for 3 and 2. Check that they satisfy the angular equation 4.18 defined below for the appropriate values of L and M. Okay, so we're in the same kind of jurisdiction, so to speak, same kind of concept, but now a little bit different check and application. So before we dive in, remember, there is a companion PDF attached in the description for all the nitpicky math steps that my brain wants, but would clog up the video. So all the little details involving derivatives, etc. Don't forget to like and like, subscribe and share and all that other stuff. All right, on to the fun. Wonderful, wonderful. So for the solution then, our case one example is for the spherical harmonic of L and L, meaning that this top L is M equal L, color coded in blue, and L equals L, color coded in green, much like last time. What we have to realize now is that we just need to keep this in terms of an arbitrary number and keep in mind what the bounds in relationship of M and L are. So here we have the Legendre polynomial, just a definition, that is P of L, so L equal L, we're good to go. What we have to do now is plug this into the associated Legendre function, which is defined here. Again, same definitions we used in the last question, question 4.4. And we see now that we just now that we're plugging it in for these specialized cases of M equals L, we're gonna have a little bit of work to do. So plug the Legendre polynomial in here, and we see we get some constants, no biggie, and we get a polynomial of inner degree two and outer degree L. Here with the derivatives, we have to be careful of as well because we have L derivatives to take here and L derivatives to take here. They combine to take two L derivatives of the polynomial, which is inner degree two, outer degree L, total degree of two L. So what we have to do now is see what the behavior of this derivative acting on this type of polynomial will lead to. All right, so if we want to take a look at the behavior of this uh, polynomial and derivative, which is the only sticking point that we have here, uh, we can see that by taking or setting up several cases of this, namely L equals zero to enough to get the pattern. What we see is that for L equals zero, we have the derivative, which is not happening because it's a zero derivative of a zero degree polynomial, overall polynomial, that just is one, which we can rewrite in terms of a factorial, namely zero factorial. Similarly for L equals one here, we have a second degree derivative and a second degree overall polynomial if we expand this out, which we don't really have to here because it's one outside, we realize that the, the second derivative will just leave this factor of two out. So here's that two, and we can rewrite that in terms of a factorial, namely two factorial. Similarly here, if L equals two, we have four derivatives to take. And if we expand this polynomial out, which is the inner degree two, outer degree two, that gives us a total of four. And we take the derivative, we're gonna have a coefficient of four, times coefficient of three, times coefficient of two and one, and that leads to a 24 or rewritten as a factorial, four factorial. One more case, just to highlight it, we get a six factorial. So we see here that if L is increasing by one, these factorials increase by twice that. So for two L, the uh, two Lth derivative of this two Lth degree polynomial leads to a value of two L factorial. Once we have this, it's quick and easy just to plug this into the associated function and simplify it out. From this function, all we have to do now is find the spherical harmonic that matches it. So let's plug that into our equation and simplify.
Coming back to our form then, the spherical harmonic defined in the opening, uh, we have to be careful of pu putting in M equals L. As we see, the color coordination here helps. We have L minus L here, so that goes to zero factorial, which is one, which we simplify there. Again, all the nitty gritty of this is in the PDF. Uh, what I want to pay attention to now is the fact that we have the uh, associated function, Legendre function here in blue. But again, since we are an angular function, we have to have this where x equals cosine theta. So whenever you substitute in, make sure to put the x variable to cosine theta. And what we see here is that we had that function with all these constants, which we come to deal with. But since we had 1 minus x squared to the L over 2 times 2L factorial, we had to plug the cosine into this x here. So that's what we did there. And then, of course, we know that Pythagorean identity will boil this down to sine squared theta. Easy enough. Some things to pay attention to now is the fact that these constants move out front. We can deal with that. These factorials uh, in this original fraction simplify down to this. But let's note that we have a 2 factorial or 2L factorial here that we can put inside the square root by putting it to a square power. And what we notice is that the 2L factorial that this had cancels with the factor of the now inputted 2L factorial. Okay, so that's one way to help simplify this. That's where we end up with this square root here. The next big thing to take a, a, into account is that sine squared, which we got from the Pythagorean identity here, into this thing, uh, su sub it in. We have L over 2 here, and this is a square, so they cancel to an Lth power. Perfect. And we notice here that the negative 1 is to the L and 2 is to the L, so that whole fraction is to the Lth power. What do you think we're going to do next, except for combine the two? So, for in general, the spherical harmonics for L and L, for M equal L, gives us a 1 over L factorial out front leading. And here we have a 2L plus 1 factorial in the numerator, which again, by definition of factorial, we got that because of the fact that we had a 2L plus 1 times that leftover factor of 2L factorial. So this is just assumed to be a factorial in and of itself. Um, and then 4 pi, of course, we just we see that everywhere. So now we have a bracket term here to the Lth power with everything mixed in. And that simplifies so sweet. And we will see that when we check the angular equation, this simplifies it nice and we can speed through that. All right, so case 2. Uh, we will just go ahead and run through that. We saw how to do this last time. So let's pl uh, plow through it. Our Legendre function, 2 to 3, 3 factorial, all that stuff, evaluates to 5x cubed minus 3x over 2. You could also pull this from the table. No biggie. There's plenty of resource for it. Um, now the associated function, again, plug it in, chug it out. We see that we have 15x, and then we have a times 1 minus x squared. All good. What we're going to have to do, uh, be aware of in the next step, though, is again, when we put it into these spherical harmonics, putting in x equals cosine. All right, so now that we're at that point, let's go ahead and tidy this up. We see that all the coefficients uh, or all the M and L ratios that we had last time simplify down to this. So please go check that out in the PDF if you need to. Uh, one thing to note here um, is that this 15 is actually composed of a 5 and a 3, and we put it inside the square root in the next step, which is why we see here 3 times 5 with the square power, but inside the square root. And, you know, we do this because this 5 factorial can be expanded to its definition of 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, all that good stuff. And we see that uh, the 5 and the 3 here cancel out with this factor here, so we can you know, get rid of that, simplify it down. When we plug in the x equals cosine in this first line, we get well, cosine x and then 1 minus uh, cosine x, which simplifies to the sine x squared, or the sine squared theta, excuse me. So you see these kind of replicated simplification procedures happening over and over again. Um, the other note that is in red is that 4 is a factor here and here. So you have two factors of them, pull it out. And then you have the spherical harmonic for 
uh, m equals 2, l equals 3, is equal to 1 fourth square root of 105, which is 7 times 3 times 5, over 2 pi. Easy enough. Then we have e to the 2i phi cosine theta sine squared theta. Okay, not bad. We've seen it before. We can kind of speed through it now. Be aware, these are the simplification hacks and tricks, whatever you want to call it. They're used everywhere, and they might not be explicitly stated. So be aware, don't go crazy when you see it. The next part of this wants us to know, do these satisfy the angular equation? Well, let's find out. Okay, so in case one, we saw we had a whole bunch of stuff going on. It behooves us to let a uh, constant be uh, labeled. So we'll let C equal all this stuff up here because these are just constant numbers that don't change that are based on the level L. So just get rid of all of that into a simplified form so we could tidy this up. Notice here that the bracket of E to the I phi sine theta and all that stuff that was to the Lth power we now split up as the individual products with the L and the exponent. Again, this is going to help us when we plug this into the angular equation, which is the next step. The question then becomes, does this spherical harmonic satisfy this equation? Okay, so for the appropriate values of uh, M and L, which is to substitute these things in, note here that this right-hand side, since L is not varying, this is going to stay the same. So we're just going to focus on the left-hand side where all the grunt work is with these derivatives and products. So a little note there, the rest of it's in the PDF if you like it line by line. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and substitute this simplified form in here. I color-coded this to where the red was what is constant with respect to the derivatives being taken. So here the phi and c are constant. On the phi derivative, the c and theta term are constant, so we're able to pull them out. So one derivative and simplify, you see we're just going to have to do a power rule on that. Um, and, or excuse me, power rule and chain rule. That's where we get our cosine. Multiply in by the sine, we, we replenish the power. Again, all the fun stuff is in the PDF. Here we just get a typical exponential derivative with the chain rule. So let's go ahead and continue to simplify this and see if we're equal. All right, so... The theta derivatives, of course, become a product rule, which just gets more messy. And we see we gotta we gotta be very careful in the simplification there and what power has what, yada yada yada. Check the PDF again. What I'd like to point out now is that with that exponential uh, derivative, we see that we just kept the exponential and the c and the sign there, so we could resubstitute in the definition for the spherical harmonic that we started with. But with the, uh, what was I L squared, so we just got a negative L squared here. And so similarly here, we have a C E to the I L um, phi and the cosine L here and a cosine L here. But when we factor it out, we get leave with a uh, sine squared here and all the other stuff we need to to sub in the spherical harmonic that we started with. Noticing now that they cancel out on, on this uh, due to the minus sign. And so we can simplify this down. And what we see here is that pushing this over here, we get a negative L, L plus one, sine squared, theta, and then with the spherical harmonic. And what do you know? This is the right-hand side of the spherical harmonic angular equation. So yes, this does satisfy the differential equation. Much, uh, much to our relief, otherwise we'd have to start over again. Case two is gonna be a little more clunky just because we actually have a lot of products to take. Here, again, let this be the C. It's going to be the same no matter what. And then we're going to have to be careful with the E to the 2, I, phi, and then this product of cosine and sine. Here, we actually have numbers for L, though. So remember that this was L, L plus 1. So this turned into negative 3 times 4, which is the negative 12 here. Once we do this, we see that this thing stays constant or doesn't change for what we need. So let's focus our attention on the right or the left hand side, just like we did before, and see what we get. So similarly, color coding the constants for the derivatives, pull them out, simplify down. We get this nice product here, which is gross, gross, gross. Use whatever calculator you want to. Once we do that again and again, we see that we have a 
factor of four that comes in from the double derivative here and we replace that with the spherical harmonic we're gonna have to do some tidying up on this thing here namely we know we can pull a four out we can pull a sine out and we can pull one of the cosines out that leaves us with the um, four here and this everything in the purple is the spherical harmonic that we want it so we purposely picked out the perfect factors for it noticing here that we get left over in the parentheses a cosine squared and a minus two squared uh, sine theta minus is four from the phi term okay why do we do that uh, just to highlight the fact that this is where things get clunky in the derivatives and we see that we could factor out the four y two three and we can simplify this down now of course we get a one minus sine squared with another minus so we just have three of them but when we factor out the spherical harmonic we have one over here too cool so that leads us to another negative one inside which cancels with this one and what do you know that leaves us with the perfect system or the perfect uh, coefficient of negative three to multiply by this four one more step after this when we condense it we see that we get the same thing so yes these do satisfy they are exactly what we expect we just have to be really careful in doing the tedious calculus and more tedious algebra other than that pretty straightforward i would say in summary now you can see how to handle a generalized case for m equals l and how to manipulate or look at certain characteristics like the derivative for example and the factorials so we can look at other specialized cases and the one that i'm going to pose to you which was posed in the book as well is what about the case for m equals a negative so negative m and we just have uh, y of negative m and l that's a good one to challenge yourself with the result might be useful when you figure it out because of what we have to do inside of certain integrals. That being said, thank you for watching, and until next time, stay curious and happy learning.